So look here, see, it's another what gear word on the street and 2024 is gonna be a game-changing year for Android flagship smartphones. Yes, Qualcomm have hatched a new Snapdragon. It is, of course, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 and Qualcomm have given it the title the titan of on-device intelligence. And the firepower is gonna be incredible and the AI is gonna be off the charts. There has been gains in all areas, but in this video, I'm gonna focus on five key areas that I think you will be most excited about. Let's start with mobile gaming. The gap between smartphones and consoles and PCs is closing. The Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 now has a boost of 30% performance when gaming and it will have a 25% faster GPU than the Gen 2, which is already the beast that sits at the top of the mountain in 2023. And the CPU is improved as well with a new configuration of 152 with a 12 megabyte L3 cache. That's two efficiency cores, five performance cores, and one prime core. And the CPU performance has increased by 30% and the clock speed on the prime core of the CPU is 3.3 gigahertz. So what does this mean for gaming? Well. 8K gaming will be possible. Yes, that's overkill, but consider this. If the manufacturers put in a USB-C port that's compatible, you could plug your phone into a monitor and do proper 8K gaming off your phone. Also, 240 frames per second will be possible. Of course, it will be on the game developers to ensure their games support 240 frames per second and on the manufacturers to equip their devices with capable displays. I've got a feeling I know who it's gonna be, but I'm interested to hear your thoughts on this. So leave a comment below. Now with great graphical power like that must come great power drain, but you might be mistaken because even though the GPU has increased in performance by 25%, the battery efficiency is improved also by 25%. And once again, it will be on the smartphone manufacturers to make sure their devices have good enough cooling systems to make the most of this new GPU. So we'll see how that plays out. Ray tracing is already supported on Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. So we'll see that again on Gen 3, but we'll also see upgrades to global illumination lighting, which means we'll see more detailed and accurate reflections in games, making them even more immersive. And check this out, the new Snapdragon Adreno in the Gen 3 will have the ability to upscale 60 frames per second games to 120 frames per second, even if the game settings does not have that option. So that's a smooth, game-changing upgrade. Have you ever heard the saying, the best camera is the one that you have with you? And for most people, that is gonna be the smartphone. And for devices with the new Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, everything in regards to camera is about to elevate. Now, I know time of flight sensors get a bad rap. Some manufacturers have been accused of putting them in their devices to make their devices look more flashy and like they have more cameras. And yes, that has happened in the past, but they do serve a purpose when it comes to depth mapping information. And this is one of the features that's about to level up. Thanks to the new and improved computer vision engine from Qualcomm, we should see improved portrait photography performance. So that's gonna be more precise edge detection and more accurate depth perception. Also the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 will now support DCG sensors that can deliver better low light and HDR performance with 140 decibels of high dynamic range. And these DCG sensors are very good at reducing ghosting and unwanted artifacts in photos as well. And Qualcomm are on their fourth gen of computational HDR. So expect significant improvements on non-DCG sensors as well. So that's better details in the shadows, a better ability to handle bright areas of the photo and balance it all out. And also night vision is coming closer to light. So you can expect incredible night photography improvements on devices with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. And this is thanks to enhanced frame rate conversions and the upgraded image signal processing. But what's really gonna blow your mind is the generative AI features that will be available offline on Snapdragon devices. Things like being able to expand around a photo using generative fill and the ability to select and delete Photo bombers out of pictures will be more precise and have a cleaner result than before as well, thanks to this AI. So on a smartphone, when it comes to photos and video, there are really three key pillars. It is the image sensor, the optics in front of that image sensor, and of course, most importantly, the image signal processing. Phones with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 will be able to capture 12 layers of information in a single frame. So this means you'll be able to color correct and color grade 12 elements within a single scene individually. For example, if you want the sky to be bright blue or any color, 
You could do this without affecting the skin tones of your subject in the video or photo. Let's say you want the grass to be greener or even purple, you could make that change without affecting the rest of the image. And just the same way you can remove a photo bomber from a photo, you'll be able to remove video bombers from the back of a video shot using generative AI. And just like photography, the night mode for video is about to level up as well. So expect brighter, more detailed videos at night. And these are all potential features that the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 can bring to manufacturers. It will be on them to apply the proper image sensors, the proper optics, and the software to utilize this potential. And in terms of video quality, you'll be able to capture footage in 10-bit Dolby Vision and BT 2020. Now, connectivity and the quality of communications is really what Qualcomm is all about. And again, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 will see upgrades in this area. And just like the other areas I've already mentioned, this area has been improved. Devices rocking the new chip will have a new modem. It will support Wi-Fi 7 with 5.8 gigabits per second download speeds. 5G connectivity will be as fast as 10 gigabits per second download and 3.5 up and Bluetooth 5.4 will be supported. So this means faster connectivity speeds right across the board, combined with a 3.1x upgrade to the AI performance of the always on sensing hub. So this is gonna be a massive upgrade to the user experience on Android and Windows devices. For example, hot swapping your earbuds or your headphones between your phone, your tablet, and your PC. All of this can happen more seamlessly now. So this will bring the Android experience closer to what we see on Apple devices, where the AirPods can contextually swap between the iPad, the Mac, and maybe your phone without having to unpair first and then reconnect to another. We'll see a similar feature to this coming to Windows and Android devices thanks to this sensing hub upgrade. And also in regards to Bluetooth, Qualcomm are on their fourth gen ANC algorithms, which means noise reduction for audio and voice calls can be improved. And with Snapdragon Sound, you'll be able to get 24-bit audio to headphones and earbuds with lossless audio quality, and this should be more widely available going forward. And also Qualcomm have made upgrades to the range with their new XPAN, X-P-A-N. They say whole house connectivity over Bluetooth. So expect Bluetooth connectivity to be more stable and have a better range. Now let's talk about AI. AI has existed on smartphones for years, but on device AI, AI that can work independent of the internet is gonna be a game changer in 2024. And Qualcomm say the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 is going to be the titan of on-device intelligence. And that's because it can process more than 10 billion parameters at 15 tokens per second. Earlier this year, I did get to see some generative AI on a Qualcomm device where you could type in some words and it would generate an image for you. And it was a very low res image and it took around 15 seconds. That same image can now be processed in one second. And this is due to a 98% improvement to the Gen 3's MPU. So what does this mean? Well, it means generative on-device AI is coming to your devices soon. And you'll be able to create anything you could think of without having to access the internet. And how could you use this on your phone? Well, you could use generative AI to improve your photography skills, even if you're a terrible photographer. You can use it to expand photos and create more background in an image. And you'll also be able to use stable diffusion to further enhance your images. And if you don't know how to make a good video, well, it could help you in this area too. If you can conceive of an idea and you believe in it, technically, you can achieve the result you're looking for on a Snapdragon device with no internet connection. And this could be an absolute game changer for content creation. Once again, it's in the hands of the developers and the manufacturers to support this new ability that the Snapdragon has. And if they do, the on-device generative abilities of Snapdragon phones will literally change the game for content creation because the possibilities could be endless. But the most impressive thing about this is the fact that this can all happen offline. I'm excited to see which brand implements this first. And I do believe it's a matter of time before we start to see offline assistants like the Google Assistant and Alexa. Imagine those being able to work independently from the internet. I think one day they'll have dreams. One day they'll have secrets. And there's a digital gold medal for anybody who knows what movie that's from. So who will be the first manufacturer to make the most of the new Titan on-device AI features? Let me know what you think in the comments and don't forget to subscribe for more content like this in the future. I appreciate you guys. I'll see you in the next one and peace in the Middle East. I feel as if I'm awake as